So this is the time of year where we start thinking about what our goals are for the new year. And since this year has been so crazy, a lot of people are really looking forward to 2021. One of the things that tends to top our list is starting a business or changing careers. And for us, that would be specifically starting a fashion design business or venturing into the fashion industry. Now, there's a lot of things that you wanna think about when you're changing careers or you're starting a business, but this video is gonna give you a quick overview of the fashion design process and how that pertains to a designer, whether that be in the corporate world or as a fashion startup. The first thing I wanna mention before we get into the lesson is that 383 Design Studio, my company, is hosting a fashion competition for new businesses and startups in January. Now you can check the link in the description for more information, but note that we are focused on the business side of fashion, which is pretty important, but often neglected by new designers. So if you're interested in entering, the deadline is Friday, December 18th, 2020. It is all virtual, but you must be at least 25 years of age and a US or Canadian citizen. Now, what I'm about to show you is similar to what I've taught my students and what I've experienced every season for the last 20 plus years I've been in the fashion industry. It varies a little bit depending on the company that you're with, but it's pretty much the same formula. When you first decide you want to start a fashion design business, you need to make sure you define your brand and your customer. First, your brand. Who are you? What do you stand for? Do you tell a sustainable message? Are you known for techie fabrics and designs? What does that look like for you? Figure out who your brand is and get clear about it. You want to always be telling a clear brand message. Think about some of your favorite and most successful brands. The messaging is very consistent and that's what you want. You want to always be telling a consistent brand story. Also, what problem are you solving? People don't buy clothing and accessories. What they're buying is that feeling of badassness when they put on your dress and they're marching into their boss's office to ask for a raise or the feeling of pride when you're wearing something that's both culturally relevant and cool or how happy you get when you purchase something that you know is not going to harm the earth or something as simple as i'm going to get a few more minutes of sleep in the morning i'll take one of those People do not buy products, they buy solutions. So make sure that you know how your brand is helping your customers solve their problem. Next, define your customer. Who is this person that you're serving? How old are they? Where do they live? What do they do? How much do they make? And where and who do they currently shop? This might be even more important than defining your brand. If you don't know who your customer is, you can't talk to them. And that's a problem because you need to be able to talk to, i.e. market to, the person that's buying your products. And if you don't speak directly to them, your sales will suffer. So create a customer profile, and as you start to sell more, your profile will evolve. You'll start to really see who's buying your products versus who you thought was buying your products. The next step is where most corporate designers start because they're already working for a company that has a defined brand and customer profile. And that is defining the seasonal concept. This is where you get to create your mood board. And if you wanna know more about that, you can watch this video on my channel. So this is a story of your collection. You'll take pictures, fabric swatches, color chips, anything that provides inspiration for your concept and create a board. And while you can use glue and scissors, this is when Photoshop comes in really handy. Also, I always suggest that you try to keep these boards as conceptual as possible. While you can put runway photos and garment pictures on these boards, just make sure that your final designs aren't so referential that you end up knocking off someone else's collection. Along with your concept, you'll also be developing a color palette. And you want to consider a few things when you're choosing that palette. What colors are trending for the season? What colors work well for your customer? What colors work well for the apparel or products you're designing for your customer, i.e. what are they doing in your clothes or how are they using your product? 
And how does your concept influence the colors? If you're not dyeing your own fabric, which a lot of startups are not, then your color palette will be based on what's available to you. But it's still a good idea to have some sort of color story in mind. So you've established a brand identity. You know who your customer is and you've established your concept board and color palette. Now it's time to design. And if you've created a great concept board, it'll be extremely helpful in establishing your design language for your collection. Maybe certain details become inspiration for design lines and patterns, or images may serve as inspiration for silhouette. From here, you go into execution mode, and this can take a few different forms. You might create tech packs and request your first samples. You may create cats to show and gauge interest first in the product before you start requesting your samples. Or you may create 3D virtual or physical samples so that you can fit and test your proto before you show it to potential buyers. All of these are viable and valid methods of execution and what you choose will be based on your budget and your business model. Thanks for watching today's tutorial. If you are new to Illustrator for Fashion, make sure you check out the links in the description to learn more about my classes and for some great freebies. Also, if you're interested in the competition, make sure you look for that link in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this if you found it helpful. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.